Welcome, in this video, I am going to show you how to factor trinomials using four different examples. Now, this is actually my um, third video in my series on factoring. And previously, I talked about factoring monomials as well as factoring binomials. And if you have not watched those videos, I would recommend watching them before getting started in this video because they're gonna give you the foundation that you're gonna need as we explore factoring trinomials. And the idea of factoring is very important, right? Undertaking an expression and rewriting it as a product. That's what we kind of talked about in the first video. And then for the second video, we looked at binomials and understood as far as factoring out the common terms or looking at the division of an expression and rewriting that as a product. Now, it becomes a little bit more confusing when we're looking at trinomials because it's not as clear what times what gives us a trinomial. So the jump that we need to make when we're going from trinomials that's different from binomials and monomials is understanding that a trinomial can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. And so I'll go ahead and confirm this because again, remember when we're factoring, we can always we can always go ahead and check our work by actually just multiplying back our terms. So when if you remember, when we have a binomial times a binomial, we're gonna want to apply distributive properties. Sometimes students remember this as FOIL. And a lot of times when you're learning factoring, we will practice multiplying binomials first. So therefore you can see that the product of two binomials can result in your trinomial. So in this case, if I want to think about this as far as division, um, distributive property, I'm going to multiply every term times every single term. So when you're looking into multiplying, if I let's try to identify how can we obtain x squared, right? How could I rewrite x squared as a product? Well, again, kind of from factoring the monomials, I could say that's going to be x times x. Now, skipping the middle term, we'll get to that in a second, let's go and take a look at this last example. How can I rewrite the negative six as a, as a product? Well, there's a couple of options, right? You could write negative six as negative six times one. You could rewrite it as six times negative one. You could do a negative three times two or a three times negative two. There's a lot of different options, right? Sometimes you can think of the prime factorization or it could just be any factored form. So the idea that we're going to be looking for is, well, not only do we want just to find two numbers, you know, negative three times two or three times negative two, there's a lot of options there, right? And so how are you going to know which one is which? Because there's only, we only have two numbers where we can put our numbers. And that comes into our idea here is this middle term. We want to find the only two factors that add to give us a negative 5x. And so when you look at these factors, you can see that a negative 6 plus 1 adds up to give you a negative 6x. So those are going to be the factors we are going to use. So I'll have an x minus 6, and then I will use a plus a one. Now again, I told you we're going to check our answer because you need to understand that when you're factoring trinomials, you're looking for the product of two binomials. So let's go ahead and write this out and see where this negative 5x comes from because typically students have no trouble finding x and x, x squared, and then negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. But the idea of looking ahead and seeing which new numbers are going to combine to give you negative 5x is really going to be the most important part. So x times x is x squared x times one is going to be a positive x, negative six times x gives you a negative six x, and negative six times one gives you a negative six. So what you can see is this negative five x is not coming out of anywhere, it's not like magic, it's coming from combining your middle terms, the negative six and the x when everything gets multiplied together. So therefore we get x squared minus five x minus six. But again, if you wanna write this in factored form, then you're just gonna write it as your product of two binomials. All right. Now, again, going back to what we talked about for binomials, you always want to look for your common terms first, right? And if you have common terms, then factor out that common term. And in this case, you can see that these are all divisible by two and they're all divisible by X. So like we did for binomials, you can divide everything by a two X. Now, again, you have to divide this two X into all of these terms. Now, I'm just going to rewrite this just in case you still have not gone and watched the other video that I explained, but it's very important when you are factoring out a GCF or a greatest common factor, you are dividing each and every term by the same value. So 2x divided by 2x cubed um, is just going to leave you with a x squared. 
4x squared divided by 2x is going to be a 2x, and 2x divided by 2x is a 1. But again, just dividing is not what we're looking going after, right? We're trying to rewrite this as a product. So therefore, what did you divide by? A 2x. So again, remember, every division problem can be rewritten as a product. Now, technically, I have factored this problem. Just like if I took the number eight and I rewrote it as four times two, that is a factored problem. But typically, a lot of times what we like to do for monomials is we want to factor them into their prime factors. Or when we're dealing with um, expressions, we talk about the linear factors, breaking them down so our variable is only raised to the first power. So now I wanna see, is there is there two binomials that would multiply to give me an x squared plus 2x plus 1? And again, to check my work, I'm just going to create two binomials and say, all right, my first two terms need to multiply to give me x squared. Well, I'm going to go with x and x. My last two numbers need to add to 1. So again, you're thinking, what two numbers multiply to give you 1? Thankfully, in this example, we either have 1 and 1 or negative 1 and negative 1. But now looking ahead, what two numbers are going to add to give me 2? Well, it's not going to be negative 1 and negative 1. Since that's a positive, it has to be positive 1 and positive 1. And then again, you could simplify this if you needed to, to an x plus 1 quantity squared. Now, the next next two examples is usually where students start to make their mistakes because, again, now we have some coefficients of our x squared. The idea of identifying these binomials becomes a little bit more difficult. So again, if you can just rely, though, on two things. One, we need to rewrite this as a product, and all your trinomials can be rewritten, or these trinomials can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. That is what we are looking for. So immediately what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I cannot factor out a common term. Automatically, you want to look to doing that first. But if you can't do that, then just set up your two factors or your, yeah, your two binomial factors. Now, again, we're looking for what two numbers or terms are going to multiply to give me a 2x squared. Sometimes this can be more complicated. Um, and again, you'd have to do more options. You just do more trials to kind of think ahead. In this case, just like if it was x squared, it was x times x. This one is going to be a 2x and an x, right? Because 2x times x gives me a 2x squared. Then I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to give me a negative 9, right? And again, you have some options here. You could do negative 9 and 1. You could do 1 and uh, negative 1 and 9. You could do negative 3 and positive 3, right? So again, what we're going to be looking for, though, is not so much these last two numbers. Those are typically the easy uh, opportunities. What we're going to look for is what happens when I multiply a 2x times that value and then x times that value, I need them to add up to give me a positive 3x. And immediately in my brain, the way that I've worked these problems, I recognize if I do 2x plus 3, that's going to give me a 6x. And if I multiply an x times a negative 3, that's going to give me um, a negative 3x. Well, 6x plus negative 3x 6x plus negative 3x is going to be a 3x, and negative 3 times positive 3 is going to give me a negative 9. And again, you could do trial and error. And, you know, there's, I have no problem with dealing with the, um, I have no problem with working with a lot of the other techniques that some of you might have already been, you know, looked at or used. Um, but the, the, um, a lot of times they take a little bit longer or they take longer than I would say that is worth my thinking. So let me just kind of think about, let me kind of show you what I would be looking at if other possible operations. You know, if I was to multiply this, this would still give me the same middle term, but this is going to give me a middle term where my negative, where my middle term would be negative because it'd be a negative 6x plus 3x. Um, this, if I look at the difference between negative 9 and x and 2x and 1, that's going to be a negative 7x. Well, again, I'm not looking for a negative 7x. Here, this is going to give me a 18 and a set and a negative 1. So that would give me a difference of a or a middle term of positive 17x. So again, it just really kind of comes into the what you're looking for um, and looking ahead. And that really um, will get easier the more and more you practice. All right, the last example is going to be how are you going to factor a trinomial when it's raised to a different power? Because if you follow that all quadratics being rewritten as a product of two binomials, that's not always going to be the case when we're dealing with cubic or even with quartic um, 
trinomials. So we have to be a little bit cautious here. But one thing I'm going to say is if this is factorable, as you know, I can look into the factoring technique for the quadratic. So therefore, I could say the x squared, or let's just rewrite it as x squared plus 5x minus 6. Let's pretend that it looks like one of these problems. And if it looks like one of these problems, let's go and use our same factoring technique. Now, notice this is basically the exact same problem over here, but now they're adding to a positive 5x. So rather than using a negative 6 and a positive 1, I am going to want to rewrite this as a, let's see, an x um, plus 6 times an x minus 1. Now again, this times this gives me that, right? But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for an x squared. I'm looking for an x to the fourth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise the powers of my factors. Now again, take a look at this. Is this going to give us x to the fourth? x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 1 is a negative x squared. 6 times x squared is a positive 6x squared. And 6 times negative 1 is a negative 6. So if you're looking for a, um, a trinomial that's raised to a higher power, look into factoring it like it was a trinomial and then raising the powers of the factors. Because as you simplify these, these are your like terms, just like these are your like terms, you're going to be left with x to the fourth plus a 5x squared minus 6, which is exactly what we're looking for. But there, there again, this is going to be our factored form of our polynomial. So that is it for our series on factoring. I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you on more of my examples down below. Cheers.